I am super excited to be able to share with you 10 lessons I've learned after uploading my very first 50 videos to YouTube. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. Number one is I bought a lot of fancy equipment. I bought everything that a creator said you shouldn't buy and ne don't necessarily need as a new YouTuber. Um, and so that includes this fancy DJI Pocket Osmo 3 that I am filming on. I also have a Sony ZV-E10 camera. Um, I purchased several courses, several things that I actually purchased but did not need. However, what I would tell you is the lesson that I've learned from it is they're absolutely correct. You do not need all of that in order to get started. Quite frankly, it made the process more burdensome because as I'm new to YouTube, I'm also new to trying to learn how to use all this equipment. So some days it got very frustrating as I'm just trying to figure out what do I need to use? How do I need to use it? How best to upload it? And I, I bought all the mics and I will tell you, if you go back and look at some of my videos, you're like, oh, well maybe she's got great audio on all of them. I do not because I actually had the mic for my Sony ZV-E10 in the wrong port. And I didn't realize it until probably several videos later that I had it in the wrong port. Um, so although I thought I was capturing great audio, I absolutely was not because I did not have it in the right socket. Number two that I've learned just from the editing process is whenever I'm talking and making long form videos, which the bulk of my videos are on my channel, um, I have 29 long form, 21 shorts. Whenever I make a mistake, I try to put up a hand so that whatever I'm editing, I know that that's something that I want to cut out or I'll do a clap so it shows up very loud uh, in the audio portion. So I know that's an indicator that I need to cut that out. And I also do something where instead of me talking and correcting myself very quickly, I'll take a pause and then I'll come back and say the statement again. So I have enough runway in the editing process to be able to chop that out. The third thing is going to be CapCut. So I use CapCut to do my editing. I started using uh, Microsoft ClipChamp because it was free. I had used that in the past for some other videos. So I have used that in the past. I've used it um, when, I very, when I started out with this YouTube channel. Um, I used something from Adobe. Uh, I already had it in my work package. Really didn't, couldn't figure it out. I thought it was too complicated. CapCut was on my phone. CapCut was on my computer when I downloaded it. So it was much easier. And yes, I bought a course from a guy. Um, I'll link it in the description. And so that was very helpful to teach me all the shortcuts. And the AI transcription that CapCut now has has been a game changer. Okay, so whenever I go on and post my video, I ask it to transcribe it and it will actually give you the script and it identifies the filler words, it identifies the ums, the uhs, and it will go in and actually ask you to, do you want all of them deleted? But what's even more important is when I told you earlier, when I have those instances where I have to put up my hand or do a clap, I can now say a word or a phrase, identify that phrase, and that lets me know that this is a place where I need to actually go and edit and cut that out of the video. It's also so cool in that you can actually select something that you said and when you click delete on the words what happens is it deletes it in the actual clip so that has been a true game changer for me with the editing process um, number four is learning uh, the cap cut shortcuts and so that's when the course came in handy watching YouTube videos come in handy and you can learn a lot by watching other youtubers uh, I think what my problem was and the reason why I ended up buying the course is because I was in overload and it was hard to kind of figure out what should I do first second, third, and fourth. So therefore buying a course, put it all together. It's not that this information I could not have found um, on YouTube or hadn't already saw some of it on YouTube. It just wasn't in a structured order. So that's why I paid, um, I don't remember how much I paid, maybe $35, $40 for this particular course that actually outlined it. And I'll link it in the description below. So J, K, and L um, pretty much is my three keys that has so saved me. The space bar, uh, it's, just, it's just been phenomenal. So I encourage you, if you're using CapCut, to learn the shortcuts and take the course below because that may be able to help speed you along. Uh, number five is I do some screen records in some of my education videos. And um, so I got, I tried to get fancy with it last week, okay? I decided to take my DJI Pocket Osmo and put it up next to my computer and film me 
doing the actual screen record, okay? So I had my screen record going on through Teams, and then I had the DJI looking at me, and then I would talk to the DJI, and then I would go to the computer. I would talk to the DJI, I would talk to the computer. And so what I didn't realize is, because I did have the DJI camera set up as a webcam to the actual um, computer and screen, screen share. So I assumed when I exported it, it was all going to export as one file. Well, it didn't. It exported it as the screen share portion of it with audio and it exported with the DJI um, uh, audio and video of me as a separate file. So I had to put the two on top of one another. But what happens is when you're editing, now I had to edit both clips. And sometimes when I'm talking to the DJI, I'm not doing anything on the screen record. So the screen record is not moving. So then I had to sync it all up. So I say that to say this, it was a nightmare. <laughs> Uh, so if you're going to do a screen record where you actually also are trying to record yourself, I encourage you just to use one file, use the webcam, talk into that one and use it versus trying to have the PowerPoint deck and the screen share on one side and you on the other. So I do use Teams or Zoom when I want to do a recording of a screen share um, and that has been very helpful. So those are the first five we've already gone through. That was you do not need all that fancy equipment, fancy courses and information overload that I had when I first started. Whenever you're doing these long form videos, be mindful of when you actually got to edit. So start from the end, from the beginning and start thinking about how do you handle pauses? How do you recognize when you need to cut something out and edit? Number three, CapCut has been a game changer. Um, learn it, use it, um, and then get something that you can learn the shortcuts for. And if you're gonna do a screen record, I recommend using Teams or Zoom to do that screen record and do it in one scoop. Don't sit there and try and do like I did and record yourself on one and use the screen share on the other. Now, if somebody has tips on how to best edit what I just said, whenever I have two different videos going that I need to sync together, please share because I did like the way it turned out um, once I finished editing, but it took me a very, very, very long time to edit it and it was quite frustrating. So those are the first five. Let's jump right on in to the next five. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the next five. Just wanted to show you another purchase um, that I did not, surely did not need, um, but it is a smart board and it's a very large smart board and I love it. Um, I always wanted one and I got one the end of last year just to reinvest into the company, but it is helping me with my YouTube channel as well. Okay, so number six is vlog specific. So I don't have but one vlog currently on my YouTube page. I have another one that I'm getting ready to upload. I finished editing it. I just need to get it uploaded. Uh, well, one of the lessons learned is to map out what your vlog is gonna be. Like I really was one of those folks that thought these vloggers are just going out, taking all this random footage, going back home at some point at the end of the week and putting it all together. No, it's an art to it. Um, I learned the hard way because I figured I do them every month because vlogging is not really something that I've set out to do on my YouTube channel um, but it is quite fun um, and I'm doing it more so to have some type of record of where I've been each and every month and time frame uh, so that I can look back and be so amazed at where God has brought me from so it's more of like a documentary for myself um, it doesn't get a lot of views which is fine uh, but I wanted it as a historical perspective for myself However, uh, I did one for April. I skipped May because May was just a bunch of random footage and I couldn't figure out what went first. Um, so there won't be a May vlog. Uh, June was better because it had several events baked into it. So I could go back to my calendar and say, oh, I did this on this date. So this must have went after Father's Day. This went before, etc." So there is a June vlog. It will be out. I can tell you right now, there will not be a July vlog because I do not have any events. I don't have anything interesting going on, but there will be one in August because uh, conference season is back up and I'll be going to Orlando and I'll be going to LA and a couple of other things. So there will be an August vlog. There will not be one for July. Um, and what I am going to do in July though is a day in the life and so that's just a one day video so I am going to do that. So the key lesson learned there is you're going to have to map it out. Um, it's just not done off the fly and put together later. Next what you want to do is get 
organized. It is very important that when you're shooting these videos, that you're getting this content, that you have it saved in a place that is organized. And so I will share with you what my folder setup looks like. Um, this actually came in handy from me from work because I'm pretty organized when it comes to saving files at work. And so putting things in folders and then subfolders. So what I have is an external hard drive because that was another lesson learned of trying to do it from my computer. I made it a very slow process process and it also because it took up so much memory so therefore I ended up buying an external hard drive which was a game changer from loading videos up to YouTube and everything uh, so I do recommend that you do get a an external hard drive but then you also need to put certain folders on there so I have folders for raw footage usually called video draft and then I have one for when they're actual final and I have them saved within the four pillars of my channel so I know where to actually go and look for them so I would recommend um, that you you check out how I actually um, file my folders and that you get very organized because what happens is when it's time for you to go and post or time for you to put the stuff together for your vlog or try and get your series together it's going to be very difficult if you've got some stored on your camera you've got some stored on Google Drive you got some stored on a OneDrive you got some on an external hard drive it's just going to be a nightmare trust me I did it uh, I did it and I learned it the hard way knowing good and well that it was going to come back to bite me in the butt um, so get organized get your folder set up uh, correctly and then what happens is you can delete some things that you're not using so that you can actually save the space the big one number eight is have fun okay so this is so much fun to me and it's because I'm learning something new it's a creative outlet I was watching a vlogger uh, yesterday who's 45 she's in Finland and she was saying that uh, 40 year old plus folks people starting a YouTube channel is the new midlife crisis. Um, and I chuckled, but I think she might be right. Uh, but it has been so rewarding because I'm able to learn new things that I never would have thought to pick up before, like video editing and just learning some of these things and being able to share my experiences with other folks. I also thought of it uh, when she was talking in the vlog about building your community. I thought about it because I used to think about this when I was growing up. If you only visit your one area, you only live in your one area, um, there's a lot of people across the world that's not going to be able to experience you. And that's a shame because there's a lot of people who could probably resonate with you and, would, and if they live close to you, you'd be good friends with. And I think of YouTube and the community as being just that. I now have the ability through posting videos for people across the world and across the United States and across the state of South Carolina to be able to experience me and feel a part of the community. I do that with other creators now that I follow. Um, and so I just think that that was another way of of looking at starting a YouTube channel um, so just go out have fun um, I will tell you it has given me a new respect for people who do this full-time I do not think I could do it full-time because then it would make it more like work and a job um, right now it's just fun and it's a great outlet from the day-to-day -day work um, so just go out and have fun Number nine is what it's done for my business. And so it's allowing me to have more exposure to me as a subject matter ex expert, but also for my business to have more exposure. So we've recently launched our Medicare ebook and course. And so now I'm able to use YouTube to provide value and education on how you can become an agent, leading people in to be able to buy the full course or the ebook to get more information. Um, it's also done the same thing for our Managed Care Online course. So it's just opened up doors and an avenue for marketing and advertising that we didn't have before uh, by giving our business exposure by providing valuable content on YouTube. So the last thing I'm going to say, which is number 10, is just start, okay? Me and two of my cousins, we're actually supposed to start at the same time. Um, and right now I am the only one out of the three of us that started. I loaded my very first intro video on February the 5th. I now have 29 long form, 21 short form, and I have some more that's already ready to be scheduled and uploaded. Um, and they haven't started yet, okay? So if they would have started when I started, even if they only loaded, uploaded one video a month or one video a week, look how many they would have had 
since then, okay? So what I'm telling you is if you're watching this video and you've watched it all the way to the end, just go ahead and start. Uh, get rid of all the what ifs and get rid of all the doubts and just start. From my first video to now, I have learned so much. Um, whether people have watched them or not, or whether they'll watch them 10 years from now, I have learned so much in the process and that in and of itself is invaluable to me. So, so I hope that you have thoroughly enjoyed the 10 things that I've learned from uploading my first 50 videos to YouTube. I encourage you just to go out and get started and then do these milestones and make these videos to encourage other people to just get started and just do the work.